Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I'm going to be explaining today about the difference between all the different kinds of pens and speak to you a little bit about what I'd recommend for a beginner and if I don't recommend something then why and um, you know what I personally like or don't like about the pens. So first up is the calligraphy marker. You get various different kinds, lots of different brands. I've got a couple here. There's the Elegant Writer from Speedball. I've used mine quite a bit. It's uh, uh, paint is actually coming off there. This one is a two mil. I've also got an Artline um, calligraphy marker. And this is how it looks here, also a size two. So for my um, students, my beginners, I like to use a size two nib. And um, the reason for that is that it, it, in a cokey size it or marker size, it works quite nicely um, just you know, from a size point of view. If you're writing with a size three, which is quite a big pen, or a size one, which is a very small pen, it can be quite difficult to, um, to control. So I personally prefer the size two for beginners. And if you have a look here, even though this is a size two, it does even look slightly bigger than the size two um, art line. So I've had people say they prefer the Elegant Writer, others prefer the Artline, some people like the Pilot because of the nice green color. They're all write black, but this one has quite a, a cool um, casing. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't come in that color, <laughs> only in the black. But it's a, they're all really nice pens to use. And if you look at the end here, they all kind of go narrow where your fingers would go. So on this green one, it's got little ridges and your fingers sit nicely on those grooves. On this one, the little grooves go the other way. They go um, horizontally and your fingers sit that way. And on the Elegant Writer, it's just a nice smooth, um, smooth end. So some people don't like the ridges. They find it irritates their fingers, in which case this one might be better. You also get the Faber-Castell one, which is a really, really nice pen to use. Um, nice end, which doesn't lose its, um, its shape. Uh, same with the Elegant Writer. These two tend to lose their shape a little bit. So if you press quite hard, if you are one of those people that tends to grind into the page a bit, what you'll find is that these lose their nice sharp um, points quite easily and you end up with what I'd call little ears where they actually end up with little points on either side. And as you write, you lose your thick and thin. So the way that these ones work is you would put the nib down and do your letter like this. What happens though, is that you often can't see the angle of the nib. So on this one, I've actually put a little dot in um, black pen on the front there just to, to show you where the pen, um, you know, where the top of the pen is. And in that way, you can keep your nib at 45. With the, um, the marker like this one, if it loses its point, this one is looking a little bit um, thick. I'm actually just going to press down a bit to try and demo that to you. I'm not trying to damage it on purpose because I'll be able to fix it. If you can see the little ears that I'm talking about, um, you may not be able to see it very well here, but it's gone almost like um, this sort of shape where your nib sits like that and it's got these thickened ends over there. So not ideal for writing. If you are going to write and your pen has gone like that, what will happen is you'll get a bit of a thickish feel to it. It doesn't look too bad, but it's not giving you a very nice um, point or not nice thin, thin stroke. And then what you do is you just push your pen on either side, you kind of just force it back into its shape and then it should be fine. So these are, they're quite cheap. So if you do, if you are someone who's quite hard on your pen and you feel like you've damaged it, then um, you know, you can easily get a new one if you feel that it's not, it's not, it's not writing so nicely. A little bit of a waste, but at least it's not too much of an outlay. So my personal choice for um, beginners, if they are prepared to spend a little bit, would be a fountain pen. So these are absolutely fine. You can keep writing with them. They're great for beginners. And also if you're not sure, you know, you may or may not like calligraphy, then um, if you do like it, or you're prepared to spend the money, we just like pretty pens, then I would suggest that you go with um, one of these fountain pens. So I'm a big fan of the Lamy pens. They're the only pens that I really like. Main reason is that they are cut for your fingers. So you've got these nice little grooves on the side and your fingers sit in the correct place. That doesn't guarantee that you'll stay at a 45 degree angle. So simply having your fingers in the right place doesn't mean that you're going to 
have your nib at the right angle all the time. You may find that you've turned your hand either way, but it at least gives you a nice start. And if you're somebody that struggles a little bit with finger placement and you tend to hold like this, or you've got an awkward grip, this will help you to get the correct grip for, um, for calligraphy. So the Lamy pens come in various shapes and sizes, and I'm talking about these, um, the, either the Joy, which is this longer one, or the Lamy Safari, which is the plastic one, or the metal one, which is the, the Lamy All Star, the AR All Star, the aluminium body. So when you buy a Lamy pen, it'll come, if it's a short one, it'll come with a pointed nib like this. So that is just a normal fountain pen nib. This is my everyday pen, so it's one that I just carry around with me and use for making notes. And this one has just a pointed, um, pointed nib. So if you try and work with this pen and you try and do calligraphy, it is not going to give you thick and thin. It's going to look like that. And it's actually designed just for normal, normal writing. If you go and take a uh, calligraphy nib, which looks like this, this is a 1.9, so it's one of the wider ones, and you put that onto your fountain, your, um, your normal pen, you just switch the nibs. You can turn your normal pen into a fountain, into a calligraphy pen simply by changing the nibs. So that's what I've done on this one. When you buy these short barreled ones, they are supposed to come with a nib like this. But what I've done is I've just put a calligraphy nib on there. And likewise, you could take your, um, the Joy, the one that's meant to be for calligraphy, and you just switch out the nibs and you can make that into a normal pen as well. So that one would also just give you the normal nib. This has got a medium size and the other one had the, the fine. So you can see the difference between the sizes. If you're working with a longer pen, what is quite nice about that is that it has got a slight amount of balance um, here because of the longer end. So it's not weighted as such where you'd find that it's heavier. It's more about a balance of how it sits in your hand. If that is quite important to you, and it is quite important to some people when they do calligraphy, all you do is you put the lid onto the back of your pen, if it's a short pen, and that would give you the same effect um, as you're writing. So with the fountain pens, there are various different kinds. If you're going out to buy a fountain pen, I would suggest that you do a little bit of research and see what's on the market. If you happen to inherit a pen, and this Schaefer is quite a common one that I see people often bring to classes. Oh, I inherited it from my grand, or my mom had it lying in the back of a drawer. So these are pens that are often, often sort of lying around, kind of abandoned, and then people, when they start calligraphy, they, they suddenly find them and, and wonder if they can work. So with a pen like this, um, and this one's several years old, this one I was given, so I'm not 100% sure how old it is, but it has no ink in it at the moment, but all you would do is you would take this, soak the entire end into water, and then pop a new cartridge onto it, and it should be as good as new, as long as the nib is not um, damaged. And most of the time, if they've been lying in a drawer, they aren't damaged, because they're usually just lying there, <laughs> not being touched. So a pen like that is, um, even though it's really old, if it's looked after, it should be in perfect order if you just give it a little soak. This is my original pen from when I did my first course about, sure, it was about 27 years ago. This one is an Osmoid, and um, in South Africa, you don't get these anymore, so you'd have to import that. And the Osmoid came with a whole lot of different nibs. So this particular pen, when I got it, this one's actually empty. So that's how the empty cartridge would look. This one has currently has a B4 nib on it, which is quite a wide nib, and um, it came with six different nib sizes. So that is quite nice if you buy a set like that. The entire end, that whole piece there, is interchangeable. So if you were using um, a pen like that, or this one, which usually comes with three different nib sizes, so we have a fine, medium, and a broad, then you've got quite a, um, a nice range of, of nibs. If you bought a pen like this one, like the Lamy, you're buying a pen with a nib. There no, um, there's a set, but it's um, most people prefer to actually buy the the entire pen. So the set only is available for the longer pens and not for the shorter ones. So people tend to buy uh, several of these pens, and usually it's based on what color the pen is, <laughs> and um, they like to bring out pretty new colors every year. So it kind of creates a bit of an addiction with most people. So um, that's the fountain pens and um, the markers. Just another thing with the fountain pens before I move on to the other options, you get a thing called a converter. It's a funny looking little plastic thing and what it does is it allows you to suck up ink. So you would take your bottle of ink and pop this into it and this would be for a pen like this. So I'm just going to show you here. I don't have any ink with me, but I'm going to show you how that would work. So you would take your cartridge out 
and pop your converter, um, you just unscrew that so all the way down, pop that into the ink and into a bottle of ink and you just do this until your uh, little converter is filled with ink and you can use any fountain pen ink that you like. And then you'd pop that in instead of putting in your, um, your cartridge. And then that way you can keep refilling. So that is also a more eco-friendly way of um, refilling your pen rather than using one of these little plastic, plastic cartridges every time. The nice thing about the converter is that you can also use all sorts of shimmer inks and pretty inks that you can't get in a, in a cartridge. Okay, then another option that a lot of people quite like is the dipping pen option. So this is my um, Mobley holder with a, with a calligraphy nib in it. So I'm not a fan of teaching traditional calligraphy with these pens, only because most people that I teach are wanting to learn how to use one of these pens or they just want to use a marker. They are not interested in ink control and drips and mess and needing to dip every five seconds. So that's something that um, I've separated and I do a separate workshop with dipping pens. So if you're wanting to learn how to do dipping pens and use dipping ink, then you would do that separately. But if you're doing traditional calligraphy, it's quite nice to just use a pen that is fairly easy like this one. But there's nothing to stop you from learning with a marker or a fountain pen and then moving on to one of these pens if you felt like it. It is quite an elegant way of writing and you can use all sorts of beautiful inks. You would dip into the ink, you can use gouache uh, paint, you can brush it on or load your, your nib with a, a paintbrush. There's all sorts of things that you can do with that. And you dip your ink and you literally just write exactly the same as you would write with, um, with one of these other pens that I've shown you. The nib fits into the holder like this. Um, oh, now I can't get it out. <laughs> there we go, just twist that a bit. So that is how it looks when you buy it. And this is my holder. This is actually a multi-purpose holder, so you can turn it into an oblique holder as well. So with that, you would just pop that into the side there, push that all the way in, and you're ready to go. The little um, piece on the top is your reservoir, and that is what holds the ink for you uh, while you're writing. If you wanted to use this holder for um, a more of a copper plate style or a modern style of calligraphy, modern, modern calligraphy, you would just put the oblique um, piece back in the flange and you would pop your nib in your pointed nib like this and you would write in that way. So these holders are quite versatile for, um, for that kind of thing. If you have bought yourself a speedball, a cheapy speedball holder like this and it's got this piece on it, if you take that out, you can't then use that for um, a calligraphy nib, for an italic nib because it'll actually fall out. There's a hole at the top and it will fall out. So you need to have a separate straight holder and a separate holder for your, your oblique nib. These are also not the greatest holders to, to work with. They are quite cheap and a little bit clunky. So I would suggest rather going with a, a nicer, a more elegant holder. Here are lots of different kinds on the market. And again, do your research before you go and spend any money on that. Okay, then the last pen that I'm going to discuss is the Pilot Parallel. So the Pilot Parallel, there are four different sizes. The lid color is what dictates the, the, nib, the, the pen size, the nib size. So the blue is six mil, and that has the largest nib. It is literally a six mil nib. And when you write with that, it gives you quite a big um, stroke. I just want to check if there's ink in here. Oh, that one's empty. There may still be a little bit, so let me try that. Um, this is a huge, huge pen. The ink tends to bleed terribly. So. I'm going to write quite big and the ink is starting to bleed over there. Not great to use. That's quite a big letter and I've gone quite skewed there. <laughs> um, the next size down is the green one. So people often ask me, do I have to put green ink in this pen? The lid color is literally just for the nib size. So that will say 3.8 on the end. It's the green uh, lid that matches the green pen. But you can put any ink, <clears throat> any ink that you like into the pen and you can also dip with these. So that is one benefit of these Pilot Parallels is that you can actually dip these into ink, fountain pen ink, preferably not um, acrylic ink. It's bleeding as well. As I said, I'm not a major fan of these. They also tend to bleed quite a lot through, um, through the pages. This one has a cartridge in it. You'll see these cartridges are different to the other cartridges. So if you've bought a Lamy pen, um, one of these ones, that will take Lamy ink. 
If you bought a parallel, it will take a parallel cartridge. So there are the different um, cartridges. So that is the Lamy one. And um, if you've got a Schaefer, then you need to use the Schaefer cartridges for that. So when you are starting out with fountain pens and these pens, you kind of need to know a little bit about what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet, so don't be afraid to read up and ask questions. Um, I do have an unboxing video of this particular green pen, and that is also on my channel. And it gave quite a lot of trouble in that particular video, and it wasn't the pen in the end. It turned out to be a faulty cartridge, so that was, that's quite an interesting video if you are interested in these pens. So this one here, the green one, is a 3.8, so it's actually double the size of the, um, the 1.9 or the 2 mil sized um, pen, this 2 mil here. When I'm teaching Gothic workshops, I like to use this one or the slightly larger um, 6 mil one. If you've bought the smaller ones, so the smaller ones are the 2.4 and the 1.5. So 2.4 will give you a slightly bigger size than the 1.9 here. If you can have a look there, you'll see it's a slightly wider pen. And so that is quite nice if you're wanting to go slightly bigger with your, um, your traditional calligraphy. Again, it depends on you and you may find that the bleeding ink puts you off a little bit. Um, the 1.5 is quite a little one, so that's a nice one for doing calligraphy. If you've bought a fountain pen and you've got it in a 1.5 size, this would be exactly the same size. What's versatile about these is that you can dip into other inks. So if you've got a color in here and you're wanting to mix up your colors, what you would do, this one has no cartridge, but you'd pop a cartridge in here, any color you like. You can then dip into a different color ink. So say you've got a blue cartridge in your, your parallel pen, and this applies to any of the, the sizes that I've talked about. You can put a blue one in here and then you can dip into another color ink. So say you dip into turquoise ink. It'll mix beautifully as you're writing. So the blue ink will come through, mix with what's on the nib, and it'll actually work quite nicely as you're writing. Um, you'll get quite pretty colors. You can also use it as a dipping pen without putting another cartridge into it. So you could just keep your pen empty. You take this out, wash it out if you don't want the original color, whatever was in here, wash that out. And then you've got a nice dipping pen. So you can just use this straight, empty like this, straight into ink, dip it in and write with it. And then it becomes quite a versatile pen. So if you are wanting to try dipping pens and you happen to have one of these, then um, I'd suggest just give this a try into fountain pen ink. You can use it on acrylic ink. You just need to make sure you wash it immediately. Acrylic ink tends to, to stain your pen. So this one here in those little grooves has actually got pink stains. And that's from about two years ago. Of putting it into acrylic ink and it's always just stained um, on here so I wouldn't suggest acrylic ink unless you really really want to try it. Nice thing about these pens, um, let me just put its cartridge back in, the nice thing about these is that you can write sideways with them so it's called a parallel pen you can write um, down like this so going straight down as a normal calligraphy pen or you can turn it on its side and it'll write like that. So you could actually write a whole word with the side of the pen. You can see it bleeding there. So when you're doing Gothic and you're needing to add all those lines and little dots and pieces, these pens are great. And that is why they're quite a favorite for people that are doing Gothic or Fracture calligraphy, especially this larger one. Um, the nib is made up out of two blades. So they're next to each other like that and the ink comes down through the middle. So that is how, um, how come you can write like that. If you're taking a fountain pen, and you try and do the same thing, what's going to happen is you write, you can do your, your stroke like this, but then when you turn it on its side, it doesn't give you the, the same um, thin stroke because there's no ink flow. These work with pressure. So as you apply pressure, the ink is released that way. So if you turn it on its side, there's no pressure um, this way. You know, you need to apply upward pressure and that doesn't happen if you're going on your side. So in that way, the fountain pens are not as versatile, but they are a lot easier and um, I think easier to use. Gives you a nice clean line as well. <clears throat> you know, the, the stroke is cleaner than on the parallels. So if you are not sure about pens and you honestly are just wanting to, <clears throat> to try out calligraphy, just go with one of these. And um, any of those types, the Faber-Castell is a little bit more expensive, so is the... Um, 
and I think the elegant writer might be slightly more. But you know what, whatever you can get, just try it. The nibs are pretty much all the same. Um, the Faber Castell will give you a much cleaner line and I do think they last longer. Copic Multiliner as well. This one is a size four, four mil. So it's quite a nice big one. You do get a smaller one in a size two mil as well. These are great. I would say this one and the Faber Castell are probably um, of the nicer pens and then these ones are adequate but they're not quite as good as um, these ones and obviously price does play a little bit of a factor. When it comes to price though with fountain pens here's an example of a real cheapie don't spend too little on a fountain pen. If you buy a set like this um, you're going to spend all your time trying to make it right and you can put the best ink in the world in the delivery system ink delivery system the nib itself all of it is not a great quality and I found that again and again with cheap um, fountain pens, you just end up sorry afterwards. The whole set with about six nibs and inks all costs less than one of these pens. So that should give you some kind of an indicator of the quality. People often tend to buy these type of sets for kids thinking, oh, well, you know, it's a child. I'll just buy a cheapy set. You put those kids off writing for life. So I would suggest not doing that. Rather get them one of these uh, markers and then if they like calligraphy then you can always get um, one of the plastic fountain pens or one of these would not be too expensive. You just have a fountain uh, calligraphy nib put on there and you're going to get that child writing a lot, uh, a lot more easily than if you go and buy them a, a cheapy set that's just going to make it make life difficult and put them off. Okay, so I hope that's helped and um, any questions you are welcome to message or WhatsApp me and um, I'll try and help you out with anything that you need to know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.